All right, friends, welcome back to the Buckethead Podcast. I don't know if you've seen this, if you're seeing this video first, or if you're seeing my my rant that I went on about um, just the last couple things here, or just about bears. But this one is kind of going back to the roots of what I used to do when I did um, these type of uh, podcasty things. I don't know what just happened to the screen, but whatever, we're going to get into this. Anyway, uh, so what we've got today is we are in the Cloud City. We are here in Bespin today. Uh, like it just 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 for some nostalgia, because I used to to have a, a background like this for the old Dead Kings podcast. So I thought it'd be fun to to do that again. Next up, uh, as you can see, to the topics on the right of the screen, we're gonna go down and talk about these things. Um, we are here reviewing. Tales of the Empire, season one, um, and it, I don't know if I don't. This is this is more of a longer, in-depth review of uh, the season, um, because yes, like I said, I had my, I had my little I had my little rant of uh, the things that really just got to me, and I'm going to touch back on some of those if uh, if you didn't see that video, but we're going to start first here with uh morgan morgan elsbeth uh the first three episodes really really focus on morgan and they really flesh out morgan as a character we see dathomir get absolutely ravaged by grievous and there was a lot of hype behind grievous um going into this and i feel that a lot of that came from the fans themselves i feel a lot of people did that to themselves i I thought it was I thought it was cool, like not cool, but interesting seeing Dathomir, um, the destruction and what Grievous did, um, and all the things that we've heard f over a long period of time and for years about what happened with Dathomir, what happened with the Night Sisters, and all that different stuff. Um, so I thought it was cool. I, uh, Morgan's mom's fight against Grievous that was heavy, but I just feel like that's the kind of thing you can expect from. Dave Filoni, where you have this this crazy big battle and it's going to have heartstrings tugged and a, and a fight that's going to end with a parent or someone dying. Like we we all really kind of knew what was going to happen. Um, so I thought it was I thought it was interesting to see, but it didn't like blow, you know, it didn't like blow me away. Um, not saying that it was bad, but I'm just saying that like it, it definitely I, I, I kind of knew what to expect from it. Um, again, it was cool to visit Dathomir again, and it's kind of cool to see the night sisters as really people like, yes, like Marin to me, I think night sisters were fleshed out a whole lot more with Ventress and with Marin, but more so Marin because we meet Marin at her most angry at her most defensive. And then where we, where you start with Marin in the Jedi fallen order and survivor games. And then where you end up with her at the end, I I just think, obviously, Morgan took and had a completely different route, so I'm not comparing the two. I'm just saying, like, obviously, we've been introduced more and more to the Night Sisters, and it's something that's been really cool, um, and it was something that was awesome to see, but definitely really sad with Morgan's story. Um, so, yeah, Dathomir was cool. Obviously, like, I, I'm not, I don't really want to go beat by beat as to what happened in every single episode, but Morgan gets control and takes over this little settlement on Corvus and obviously Corvus being from the Mandalorian season two, we get introduced to it there. At least I'm pretty sure that's the first time we see Corvus. Um, it's this little village of people who basically appointed, um, or one of the guys appointed Morgan as their magistrate and they had their resources and all their stuff to build all this stuff for the empire. And she goes to the empire and she's like, I want to work for y'all. Da 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 da. And it, as you know, it, it goes the way that it goes, but it also really, and this might be an unpopular opinion, but I was really hoping that like watching this, I'm like, this would have been cool to see before the Mandalorian. This would have been cool to see Morgan doing all of this and becoming who she is before the Mandalorian. Um, much like I'm going to talk about the Barris stuff. Um, but yes, I, I, I really did enjoy seeing this. I loved seeing her fighting obviously cause it's animated, but it was so much more impressive in animated than it was with her staff, at least against, um, Ahsoka 
in the Mandalorian season two. I think I think kind of jumping to uh, comparing her fight in Ahsoka and the Mandalorian and live action like or er, and animated. Obviously, I think the animated looks the most fluent. Um, I don't know if it was choreographed or if it was straight up animated. I because I know in the Clone Wars, uh. Darth Maul versus Ahsoka, that was mocap. Um, and I thought that was really, really cool. Excuse me, sorry, need to hydrate. But uh no, yeah, I think that that fighting style, like comparing that, I I thought Ahsoka and Morgan's fight, just the choreography when it came to the Ahsoka show, I thought that was pretty good. I had a good time with that duel. I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I I did. Um but anyway, yeah, it was cool to see Morgan's rise to power. It kind of threw me off. Like, obviously, like, it kind of threw me off. And not in a bad way, because, like, obviously, I, I know I had said that in my rant. I was like, we've never really seen someone full send into being bad. But that's what we see with Morgan. And it's really, it was really interesting to see that she wasn't like, well, I want to treat this place better than Dathomir was treated. She's like, no, nah, I'm going to make this place burn. Like, everyone's going to suffer with me. <laughs> like it was kind of like Davy Jones. Life is cruel. Why should the afterlife be any different? Um, so that was, again, it, it threw me off. I wasn't expecting that. And that was the thing that kind of just roped me in. Cause I'm like, okay, we're finally full sending with this arc. Like, okay, cool. Great. And then I remember I'm like, oh yeah, she meets her end in Ahsoka. And that's where I'm like, ah, I wish we would have got this before that. So we could be more invested into Morgan Elsbeth. Um, but yes, I thought the Morgan Elsbeth stuff was great. It was, it was, it didn't feel like it was, it overstated as well. Obviously it was three episodes, um, but I thought that it was really, really interesting. And I thought it was really cool. Like I would a hundred percent go back, watch those first three episodes, watch the Mandalorian, and then go back and watch uh, Ahsoka. So the next thing we have is Barris. Um, Barris's situation is a little different for me because obviously like, I'm sure a lot of people are like, well, we already had Morgan full send and be bad and all that stuff. And they would be, why would we do that again with Barris? And I'm like, okay, but this is tales from the empire. This is the bad guys tales. And we didn't get that <laughs> realistically. The, uh, the, the, the thing for me is that the Inquisitors are right under Vader. They are Vader's elite. They are they are hand picked by Darth Vader. They, I could I could go so far into it, but Vader literally, I, Vader literally <laughs> broke one of them, as in he cut off one of their feet. I think it was some, one a foot or an arm. He cut off their foot or their arm because they just weren't hating enough. That that's how badly the Inquisitors get broken when they're coming up in their Inquisitor training. If they don't make the grade and there, there's any scent of doubt, they get killed right then and there. And that's where I'm like, Vader would have snuffed out or sniffed out Barriss's resolve doubting had, had that been there. But again, she straight up chokes and kills her friend to pass her test. And uh, good Lord, that's where I'm like, okay, damn damn, we are getting dark. This is going to get dark. Barris is going to be the big baddie for Ahsoka season two. She's going to be right next to Thrawn and obviously no. Now, like I said in my rant video, uh, in the Clone Wars, Barris obviously frames Ahsoka for the attack on the Jedi and Barris gets found out by Anakin. Anakin obviously goes toe to toe with her. She has Ventress's sabers. And when Anakin and, and uh, Barris are locked up, Barris says, I think the color suits me, or I think these suit me to be like, hey, I should be, I should be on in the dark side. I should be on the dark side. I should be a Sith. Um, and then she goes to say, after she's arrested, she makes her confession and she says, I did it because the Jedi are starting to become, are starting to become a tool for the dark side. And I don't like that. And I hated that. And then it's like, okay, but like two seconds later, you were just basically using red sabers, obviously to defend yourself, but using red sabers and then saying that they suited her. So that makes, that's a contradiction there. And then to, um, 
within the Clone Wars, obviously, kind of kind of jumping ahead. A lot of people are saying that Ahsoka and Barris are friends, and when um, Barris tells her people to go take the kid to an old friend, everyone's like, "Oh, it's Ahsoka. That's got to be Ahsoka." And I'm like, "Yo, I'm like, I'm sure Ahsoka's not holding a grudge, but like Barris ruined her life." Barris ruined Ahsoka's life with what she did. Why the hell would her and Ahsoka shack up? But then again, it's like, hey, anything's possible in Star Wars, apparently. Like, throw logic out the window, throw continuity out the window. Okay. Um, but anyway, that's like that's Barris's lore within the Clone Wars. And I thought Ahsoka and Barris had such a great relationship, especially in that Geonosis uh, episode where they're stuck in the tank. I thought that was really great, but I thought it would I thought it would be so much more impactful and heartbreaking as Star Wars is a lot of the time that we would see Thrawn come down on his ship and it would be him, Balin Skull. I don't know how they're gonna do Balin Skull in season two. Um but it'd be him, Balin Skull, and then another Inquisitor, and that Inquisitor is Barris. So Ezra and Sabine would be fighting Balin and Shin. Um, and then Ahsoka obviously is going toe to toe with Barris and Barris is just fully corrupt at this point. Like she's, she's a full on inquisitor. She's full on dark side, full on Sith, whatever you want to call it. That's what she is. And we have that toe to toe and whatever happens happens. But this, this kind of just like, I don't know. I don't know. So again, with, with going back. Barris has the training. Her and her friend have this Apex Legends style fight where there's a hole in the middle of the ground. There's a laser wall coming in. The storm's coming in. The ring is coming in. And uh, they have to kill one or the other. The other has to kill one. The Someone has to kill the other or they're both going in the hole. And Barris literally grabs the homie by the throat, gives him a death stare, lifts him up with the force and snaps his neck. And to me, that's where I'm like, bro, she's full in. She's full in. But then when she's kneeling down and they're like, and the Grand Inquisitor's like, meet your new master. Obviously, Barris is kind of looking over her shoulder to see who it is. And I'm like, oh, I had a feeling that this was going to happen, that they were going to do what they did, Um, that they were going to have her turn and try to be a New Republic style group of people or whatever. Or person, and I'm just like, okay, like I'm like, please just don't do this. Have her just be like, hey, I'm gonna full send whatever. But obviously, they the next little um little uh cliff note here subject here is the Jedi. So they go, and this is kind of this is where it basically it's before they actually find the Jedi. They go to this town. They're looking for. Uh, the Jedi looking for someone to tell him about the Jedi and Barris is talking with this little kid and you see both sides of it. I can't, I think her name's Lynn. Um, you see Lynn and Barris and Lynn's doing bad cop. Barris is doing good cop and she gets the answer and, uh, they end up going to hunt this Jedi and obviously Barris is like, we need, this is chaos, blah, 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 blah. And Lynn says something straight up. That's too true. That's too true from the standpoint of the empire. Barris says, um, uh, if we weren't, weren't to do this, th- when we do this, th- that'll turn them against us. And Lynn says, they're already against us. We need to show this force so that they respect our power. And again, I'm just saying from the dark side standpoint, like from the Empire standpoint, that's it. We, I want to see that part and that side of the story be told. That side of the creed be told. Like it, it's, I was like, she's spitting facts to you right now. Like all the empire, <laughs> they are taking control. They're not asking for it or like, Oh, Hey buddy, old pal, you want to, you, you want to be subservient to us for a little bit? No, they're like, again, she's like, they're all, everybody is against us. Nobody wants this, but we're going to make them. Um, and that's when they're hiking. They get up to the Jedi, and Barris is talking sense to the Jedi. And I was like, okay, yo, Barris is recruiting another Inquisitor right now. We're like, we're going to get another Inquisitor, and then Lynn kills him. And I'm like, damn. And that's where I'm just like, okay, yeah, they're turning Barris to the good side. And then Barris then, she's like, 
Vera says the whole thing. They have the whole back and forth. I can't even really remember what it is, but the, along the lines of that's one less Jedi that we have to worry about. And um, Vera says, well, you have to worry about another Jedi now. And then Lynn turns around, goes to fight her, and Barris pushes her off a cliff. Obviously, she's not dead, but Barris is now a Jedi again. Um, and so I just... I was like, I, I, so already, boo. Like, I again, I'm upset just because this, the, if it wasn't almost beat for beat what happened with Aiden, then I would be less upset about it. And I'm not, I, I again, I wish that they would just full send and tell another side. Um, obviously, in, uh, this is completely random, but in, um, Star Wars Squadrons, we get to play a dark side story, but it's just mirror opposite of the Jedi so, or of the Republic. So if, you know, the Republic's going up against a Star Destroyer, it's just mirrored and you're going up against a, a Republic cruiser. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's nothing too crazy. And if the story was so memorable, then we'd be hearing more about it. But I would want to see just like, I want to see their rationale and their reasoning for this because obviously in so many movies like especially when anakin anakin's trying to get padme to understand why he's doing what he's doing palpatine is trying to get anakin to understand hey this is why you need to join the dark side i want them to tell a story for the fans to be like oh hey this is their motivation for doing what they're doing this is why they're doing it this is how the empire operates on the inside and not just have the empire be a bunch of cannon fodder oh goodness gracious uh but no, yeah, that's that to me. I'm again. I'll I'll go over this again uh, with Aiden Versio's character. She obviously was born. Her dad was high ranking in the Empire. Um, she started out, you know, as a stormtrooper, became special forces, and obviously with special forces in Star Wars, you got to do some stuff, very questionable stuff, in order to become special forces. And on those special forces missions. You do some extra stuff, and I would imagine Aiden interrogated and tortured people and all that stuff. But only when it hits her doorstep does she think, hey, this is wrong. The Empire's bad. We lost two Death Stars, and I'm only now realizing that we're the... These Death Stars <laughs> blow up planets, right? These Death Stars blow up planets, killing millions of people in the process. And because we're sending satellites, cinder satellites on our own people now, which again, a lot of the places that were blown up by the Death Star, Scarif being one of them, <laughs> and uh, Jetta were Imperial occupied, so they killed their own people anyway. So I didn't see this happening on 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 uh, Vardos, and she's like, I don't think I can do this. So she turns coat with Dell. And again, she goes to the rebellion and then years down the line, when she's an old lady, she gets killed uh, by Hask, one of her squ uh, former squad mates. And it's just the same thing. Barris turns coat, becomes old, you know, she's trying to save someone, trying to do the right thing. And she ends up getting killed by, by uh, a former teammate, if you will. And that, um, again, I think that's the biggest thing for me is I'm like, there's nothing new there. These story, <sighs> I'm gonna say Dave Filoni just tells the same stories through different characters, and I know that's a hot take. But how many times have we seen the Grogu thing, where it's an older mentor who's reluctant to deal with the kid, ends up training this kid, getting attached, having a great relationship? Anakin, Ahsoka, the Bad Batch, Din and Grogu, like <sighs> so many of these stories are just rehashed, and that's my biggest thing that I'm tired with about Dave Filoni is that <laughs> homie can't do anything new. Oh, man. But anyway, let's get to, obviously, her being the healer. And uh, I, again, with, with her, her sending the kid off, I personally think it might be that Jedi that she helped, that Lynn killed, air quotes, but then she must have got him somewhere to get healed, um, and he ends up, being another another rogue Jedi, and she's sending the kid to him. Now, again, I'm sure to the next, oh, excuse me, the next subject is, it is, I feel like it's going to be Ahsoka because 
everywhere, everyone's already saying all roads lead to Ahsoka now. Ahsoka is the new Grandmaster. She's the new this. She's the new that. There's going to be... I'm seeing that people are theorizing that there's going to be Ahsoka. It's going to be Ahsoka because she's going to be old lady Ahsoka now. She's going to be the new Yoda, and then Finn and uh, Rey are going to be her new council people. But again, obviously, we know Rey is now going to be Grandmaster Rey starting a new Jedi Order. But anyway, everything is now going to Ahsoka, and Ahsoka, like, obviously we know what happens, is that it's Luke that trains the next generation of Jedi, and then 30 years after that, they get destroyed. But I... I don't know. I don't like the idea of Ahsoka being so involved when she's just trying to hide. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, she's doing the stuff with Rebels, and yeah, she's doing this other stuff, but, like, there's so there's so much. And maybe maybe it's Cal Kestis that I don't know. Like, it's not Cal Kestis. That's stupid. But <laughs> but I, I want, like, we get introduced to this new character, right, the one that Lynn almost killed. I'd love to see them do something with this new character and that new character be introduced live action and, you know, have some development and stuff of his own. Or it's the character that I can't remember his name, but the character who saved Grogu, Ahmed Best's character. Um, anyway, so, yeah, uh, we get to the part where um, Lynn, like Lynn's like swinging at, uh, I almost said Sabine, gosh, at Barris. And Barris is kind of doing what the Grand Inquisitor was doing to her. She was like, oh, you're becoming predictable. You're you're doing this. You're doing that. And Lynn, obviously, who hasn't aged a day miraculously, is just like, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. I'm going after him. And she's like, and Barris is like, okay, well, if you go after him, you're going to get lost in that fun house. And I'm like, yo, this chick ain't dying because she's in the Kenobi show. What is this? Like, what are we doing right now? Why are, I'm like, is this, is this the Jabim thing all over again? Like Vader trunch bowling through this place to get to this kid who's about to escape or this person who's about to escape. They escape at the last second and they kill the person that was stopping them. Not really. Cause obviously Reva wasn't trying to stop Vader from getting there. She just wanted to kill him herself, but I don't know. Like, <laughs> and Barris's end Again, obviously, people are saying that she's not dead, and I wouldn't be surprised if she's not dead. Um, but there's not much more you can do with her, in my opinion. Like, she's dead, or she comes back. What is she going to do? Hang out with Ahsoka? Like, hang out with the Mandalorian? Be a monk? Be a hermit? Like, go find Reva and hang out with Reva? Nurse Reva back to health? I don't, like, what are they going to do with her? Like, they can find her okay. I don't care anymore like obviously i grew up on the clone wars right i grew up with that barris arc i grew up with ahsoka leaving the jedi order right we've been waiting for this a conclusion and this is what we get in three episodes they kill off barris that's where i'm just kind of like oh, man dude like <laughs> i don't know i don't know and Kind of just in um, conclusion, right? Uh, people have said that, oh, I wish we would have got to see what Vader was doing during this time. I really do think it would have been interesting to see that story play out where Vader has that one clone homie, that one guy that was like really close with him. I think it's a Legends book, right? Or Legends book now. I don't think it's canon. Um, but he has the one clone buddy or homie. Um, and he just kills that entire infirmary of rebellion uh, troops. I I would have loved to see something like that. But again, to me, this is where I feel about Vader, right? How I feel about Darth Vader is that you have to do him right. And people are complaining about, about Vader in this. And he really didn't do anything. If I remember correctly, he kind of just walked onto the throne and then did his thing. Like there, there wasn't, there wasn't too much more to Vader. Um, and honestly, I'm fine with that. Like, to me, Vader was always the less, less is more with Vader. But obviously what we've gotten now, they've treated Vader with such, I mean, I could, I, as much as, as happy as I was to see him and Obi-Wan's second fight in the Obi-Wan show, 
I think the things we've gotten with him, obviously they kind of made him look like a bitch when he didn't kill Reva after failing him like three times in one show, but he kills his generals for fecking him over once and he kills Trilla for screwing him over or failing. Um, even though the people he's trying to kill are right in front of him. So she got them there, but obviously he didn't kill him or she didn't kill him. But Reva gets multiple tries and isn't killed. And she's like, well, I threw a tracker on the ship. And he's like, okay, you can live. It's like, bro, bitch, why do I, what do I need you for? I've got, I've got this tracker. Give me what, how you're tracking it and you're dead. Anyway, the point I'm making is I'm like, I don't, unless they're going to do it right, I don't want it with Vader. Um, I do think it would have been cool to see Tales of the Empire where the first it's Balin and Shin and we see how Balin met Shin through three episodes. Balin met Shin, their stuff through the Clone Wars or whatever, um, or, you know, Balin coming up within the Jedi, Clone Wars, Order 66, and then the last episode could be Balin meeting Shin and kind of training her and stuff like that. Um, that would have been a bit more interesting, but I don't know. In my humble opinion, I personally, when it comes to these tales, um, I got to say, I got to, I got to rank them, right? So for me, for this one, I'm going to give tales of the empire. I'm going to give it a five out of 10. And this is, I think my first ranking on something like this. Um, because, to me, it's it's middle of the road. I'm 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 gonna forget about it. Tales of the Jedi, Dooku stuff. Again, this is kind of how I'm, I'm feeling. Again, Dooku stuff was something we had never heard, never known about, right? Ahsoka stuff, where she goes to Padme's. We see her learning how she's gonna defend against Order sixty six. Then we see her going to Padme's funeral and escaping just barely. Then we see her on a farm and kill an Inquisitor. Big whoop. I don't care about that. Like, I'm over the Ahsoka stuff at this point. The Dooku stuff, which we never, ever experienced or ever explored, that was great. Morgan stuff and Dooku stuff, that was cool. Um, but to me, I got to rank season one of Visions over... over Tales of the Empire. I had more fun with season one of Visions than I did with the Ahsoka stuff and Tales of the Jedi and the Barris stuff. Um, again, hot take, hot take, and not a lot of like Visions doesn't get the respect I feel it deserves. Um, because definitely it's a bunch of different tales, and I don't know if they're canon or not or whatnot. But like I, I get just as having fun. With Star Wars, it was something new. I The stories, in again, season one. Season two, I think, was abysmal. I, it was awful. I could not stand season two of Visions. Um, but, yeah, I, I with this one, I got to give it a five out of ten. It's middle of the road, n- nothing really crazy going on, and if you don't see it, you're not missing out. Um, but I would say check it out for Morgan stuff. Anyway, that <laughs> will do it for this Buckethead podcast reaction review I should say review of tales of the empire and I will see you all friends in the next one